We took a couple of weeks off for the holidays, but this week at Batman is back. We've got new issues of Batman, Detective Comics, Dark Knights of Steel, and Arkham City. And you're talking with me about it, as always, is the man from PopMyCulture.com, contributor to BatmanNews.com. Josh, how you doing? I'm doing well, Wes. How are you? I am doing fantastic. We actually have a pretty damn good slate of Batman comics this week. There's not a whole lot to complain about. Let's get into Batman first. This is Batman 119, Joshua Williamson, Jorge Molina. It turns out we did get a ruse last week that Abyss might not have been dead the whole time. The first thing we do need to talk about, we do get a Lex Luthor here. The art throughout this comic book is fantastic once again. Does he not look too much like Mark Strong? I didn't think about that. Yeah, he does look like Mark Strong now that you mention it. Uh, I'm okay with that. I'll take a Mark Strong Lex Luthor. Why not? I mean, he, he seems like he'd be seedy and up to no good. Uh, if, if if you had Mark Strong walk on screen as Lex Luthor, I'd be like, I'm down. So, like, yeah. You'd have some presence to him. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. But yeah, he did have, now that you mentioned it, he did have a Mark Strong look to him. And we learned that... Uh, Lex Luthor is behind Batman Incorporated characters and in that he, apparently he's infiltrated. He's in, in charge of the entire police force and he wants to take the body of Abyss back to his personal laboratory to have a look-see at it. And he ends up inviting Bruce Wayne over, kind of needles him a little bit there. Clearly Bruce does not respond well when he realizes that that uh, Lex is behind Batman Inc., which honestly, like, it seems like something Lex would do. And if you take yourself back to a prior to Rebirth, they were kind of setting Lex Luthor up in this type of way to begin with, of, of kind of having some control over what the superheroes were doing. But uh, this seems like it's just another step in that direction. Understandably, Batman is not going to be excited about it because we know Lex Luthor is, is typically up to no good. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he kind of lets him know like, Hey, you know, this, these are my plans. This is what I'm doing. I'm getting the body. And he actually offers for Bruce to, to look at the body. So right then I was like, all right, so where's this going? Uh, in an intriguing way. Cause I was, I was curious and I was kind of hooked in by what Williamson was setting up. He's, he's going to see this body one way or the other. And we've got this, you know, this detective that's working within the police force that knows yep. it's shady and corrupt. She's kind of fighting against the system. And we see Batman goes in there. He needs to get his hands on the body and it's not abyss. It's something else. It's far more decomposed. And he's trying to kind of uh, take some notes about this. And then we finally do see our first look at the Alive Abyss, Josh. And I must say, Jorge Molina knocks this moment out of the park. They they do the lettering really good. It's yep. really eerie. And it was a wonderful first appearance of the character live and in person. You know, there's a couple of things here that, that come into play. Because um, I'm sure some people are like, wait, why is Bruce trying to get to look at the body before Lex lets him look at it. And it's because he's a, he thinks Lex is up to something and is going to do something with the body. So he wants to inspect it before even Lex gets his hands on it. And that's why he goes down to the police precinct to look at the body. You're right. When he gets there, it doesn't seem to be the body that, that was, was murdered. It, it can't be Abyss because Abyss was, has been killed for, I think, less than 48 hours at this point. Mm -hmm. And the body is decomposed to like the state of a month. But there's some really weird stuff going on here because at one point the dead body projects like this black fluid out of its body, out of its mouth. Abyss appears and I was kind of skeptical about how they were going to handle Abyss prior to the story starting. But now that I'm in it and I see how they're approaching the character and the abilities that Abyss has, I, I'm on board. Um, Abyss can kind of manipulate darkness, uh, maybe not for reality, but for how the individual that they're, he's attacking perceives darkness. So I thought that was really cool, and we get a, a a good introduction here. So I'm I'm enjoying Abyss from what we've seen so far. In the way that Abyss is speaking, Abyss believes it or is projecting that there's some type of supernatural villain here. They're not just a regular human being. And this black substance ends up being pretty important because we see there is a striking blow with the, the scythe that Abyss has. It appears to hit... At first, I thought he hit him in the neck because he had blood coming out of his mouth. It turns out he got him in the stomach. Yeah. But then we do get the reveal that this black substance has done something to Batman because his eyes are black and he can't see. Even when Abyss appears and the and the the um, uh, morgue goes dark, Batman comments that he can still hear and smell what was in the morgue. Like he can hear the machines running and he can smell like the chemicals, chemicals. used to clean the morgue. That was the first sign of like, okay, this isn't, he's, you know, there's something going on here. And it's that final page that you see his eyes are completely blacked out that it's like, okay, Abyss has done something just to his vision. 
but all Batman can see is darkness all around him and that's it. And, you know, Batman even makes a comment that he's comfortable in darkness. And what I found interesting was Abyss made a comment about uh, you created me. So mm-hmm. referring to Batman. So I, I thought that was interesting. I don't like these whole like, oh, here's a villain you never knew about that's been around for forever. But I'm I'm curious to see where they take this because I don't think they're going necessarily that route. I will definitely highly recommend this comic. The art is fantastic. I think the story is good. And like I said, the introduction to Abyss is quite satisfactory after, you know, a kind of a weird first appearance in the last issue that didn't Agreed. totally make sense, but it makes sense now that we've seen it. Yeah, the story's starting to settle. And again, Molina's art is incredible. And also uh, Mikhail Hanin is, is on here for a few pages as well to help out, which is a little concerning that they have a guest artist stepping in for the second issue of this, of this arc. But uh, if you're going to have someone step in, that's not a bad person to have step in. And their their art worked well together. Now, before we get into Detective Comics in, in Arkham City, I, I got to talk about this, Josh. There's this weird thing. It's going on in three different Batman series right now. This argument that Arkham and, and Blackgate or whatever should be doing treatment of these criminals rather than punishment. It's happening in Detective Comics in this issue. It's happening in Arkham City. And it certainly happened in One Dark Knight from from Jock. I get that that could be a conversation that can be explored very effectively in Gotham. But it kind of gets tiresome when you're seeing it in three concurrent Batman series. Oh, agreed. I, I think this is part of like the tie-in effect that we're still seeing. Of There was a lot of plans that were kind of like thrown to see what would stick against the wall. And because it wasn't as planned as well as it needed to, you've got everyone just kind of referencing things when they don't necessarily need to. And I think this is part of that problem. But yes, um, it it seems like a lot of people are running with this idea or this concept without fully thinking it through or fully baking it into their story. And they're referencing it almost as a mandate. And then Detective Comics actually does something with this story, which is nice. But if they're just going to reference it in other stories, I wish they would have just not referenced it at all. Like you can reference the tower leave it at that. And we know like, okay, here's the story going on with there, but it felt a little out of place. And yes, it does get a little tiring, uh, especially depending on your opinions of, of, you know, you know, what is, what is imprisonment for? Is it for uh, rehabilitation or is it for uh, punishment? And I think that depends on the crime, but with these criminals, I think uh, punishment is, is definitely the course of action we should be taking. Yes. These are mostly serial killers that we're dealing with here. And that'll get us into detective comics. 1047, yeah. Rinko Tamaki, Ivan Reese on art. The book looks great. You have to come in and buy the premise of the comic story and be completely honest, Josh, I can't in any way in my head foresee anyone in Gotham City, let alone their leadership, saying, you know what would be great? We need to shut down Arkham Asylum and build up Arkham Tower in the middle of the city so all these criminals can escape into neighborhoods and murder more people. I think it's I think it's kind of twofold. I think after people escape from Arkham Asylum so many times, I, I would definitely be on the, the committee being like, we need a new facility. Like, please build something that can hold these people. That's outside uh, the city and as far away as I possible. Agree. I would want it outside the city as well. Um, but yeah, I, it's one of those things that it's like, I hate the idea of it being in the center of the city. I, I'm fine with them building a new facility. Uh, the fact that it's a tower is kind of strange. Maybe it just it is creates, really strange. Maybe the idea is that like if you have criminals high up, it's going to take more work for them to get down depending on your That's level. It's more of force for them to throw people out of <laughs> that. Well, which we see here. Um, yeah, no, it's an interesting concept. Uh, I did. Interesting. I like your words. Word choice there. <laughs> interesting. I didn't say it was great. I said it was an, it was an interesting choice. Um, I think it's an odd choice. I, I, I don't want to cut you off here, but. We see, like, in the opening scenes, we see this uh, this Nero guy gets brought out who just tried to murder the mayor yep. five hours ago. And they're like, look, he's rehabbed. Give us more money. Who in their right mind that has been through City of Bane, Joker War, and now uh, Fear State is going to be like, oh, this feels like on the up and up. Let's fund this. Yeah. I And again, I have two, two mindsets here. 
on on one, I will say I I often don't understand what society's doing anymore anyway. So I'm like, well, fuck it. Like, who knows? Like, I, <laughs> I feel like I go against the grain as it is. So I could kind of believe people being like, oh, yeah, we're healing people. Great job. Get, do more. Um, and maybe it's my time living in Los Angeles that I feel that way. But uh, I can I, I wouldn't be surprised by people responding that way. I thought they handled this moment well, though, because um uh, Nakano is not happy to see Nero. He he's kind of blindsided by it, and it's like an event. It's a it's a presentation event where they they kind of do this dog and pony show and, and create the circus of look at us, pat ourselves on the back. Um, and he's not happy to see it. And even Deb Donovan is like, what what is going on here? Like, I don't trust anything where we're doing some type of showcase uh, for for mental health. And uh, the fact that they wrote that in for those two characters helped me feel more at ease with what was going on. And I appreciated it. And then um, the fact that they were touting how that they were, how they were healing these criminals and even the mindset of the criminals, they were almost, I don't want to say a blank slate, but they were almost like a, um, like it, they were in a, in a, a numb in a way, like they didn't fully respond. There wasn't emotions. They didn't have much depth or, or much of anything to their thoughts is very basic because they show another criminal later and she's like doing art projects. Um, <clears throat> so for me, if you've ever seen the TV show dollhouse, it made me think of that. And I was like, Oh crap, are they going to go some route where it's like dollhouse where they're trying to control people mentally and then they break free, which we see is kind of the case. Like they were clearly giving these criminals drugs <clears throat> and then it fast forwards like, three weeks, 24 days, I think. Um, and then we just see that all hell has broken loose. The tower's on fire. Uh, the doctor that was featured at the beginning gets thrown out of a window, however many stories up and is killed. Um, and I didn't expect it to progress that fast, but we're here. So I guess we're progressing that fast. I don't think we've progressed that fast. Well, I think we've jumped to the end and then we're going to go back to the beginning again to see how we got there. Possibly. I, I kind of hope so, because I'd like to see some build up. But at the same time, it's like now that I know what's going to happen, I don't want to spend four issues. I'm with you. We're 12. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. Four issues, five issues leading up to like, oh, here's where we are. But we also see that we've got heroes in the tower at the time of the They've been infiltrated by Dick Grayson and the other Robins. I think we've yeah. got Huntress in there. We've got, I think, three people are in the tower. You've got Dick, uh, Steph, and then uh, Huntress. And Dick seems to be fine. No one knows where Steph is. They can't get a hold of her. And Huntress has is is wounded um, and is hiding out on top of an elevator to try to, I guess, heal or stay safe. And then you've got uh, Batwoman and Batgirl, C Cassandra Batgirl, outside trying to devise a plan. So, I don't know, Josh. This is me. I, when I think of Gotham, I think of the most cynical city in the history of the world that's been dealing with these criminals for decades now. And I just don't see anyone in Gotham being like, you know what? Your hippy dippy, uh, you new new age mindsets are going to work in this city and let's just go along with it. It's hard for me to buy into the premise. I love the art, you know, but I'll recommend it. But it's it's a very light recommendation just because I think the, the premise itself is almost farcical. Oh, yeah. I, I will say, did I did I think it was great? No. <clears throat> was it better than I expected? Yes. Um, and part of that's from the the lead in story that was supposed to tease this event. That the we had was bad. Oh man, it was so bad. And and that for me was like, oh crap, we're we're not in for anything good here. And it was better than I expected. So I will give it credit for that. Um, and I think part of the problem we have with not believing Gotham would even think this is. Um, they try so hard to tell these over the top stories. You had city of Bane, you had the Joker war, you had uh fear state that are so grand that yes, if that's the reality, which clearly it is, no one would buy into this. If you went back to a traditional, just seedy Gotham, eh, it's a little more believable. So I'm trying to keep that head canon for myself and, and it's making me or more open to, to accepting the story. But Man, I, I, you have bought I into the omniverse, sir. Uh, I just look, I try to pick and choose what I think is real and what isn't. And right now I'm trying to forget City of Bane, Joker War, and Fear State. Well, let's get into uh, another far off make believe land. We've got Dark Knights of Steel number three, Tom Taylor, Yasmin Putri. I personally like these kind of weird Elseworld stories where you yep. can put the characters into a different genre. You, you'll play on their strengths and like, how are the, is, is this going to work in like a fantasy type realm? 
more of a Game of Thrones type thing. You could definitely inspired by Game of Thrones. But we're seeing some of the fallout of some major deaths. And I'm going to be honest, I think the art by Yasmin Putri is really good. I don't get what I get the story that Tom Taylor is doing here. I don't understand why he hasn't adjusted any of the dialect where people maybe have a little more of an, a fantasy or old school like old English playing on their on their dialogue yeah. and stuff. And the the big catchy out of nowhere deaths are kind of getting old at three issues in. Yeah. Um yes. So the out of nowhere deaths, I will say, well, just the language aspect, I completely agree with you. It seems weird that we don't have like some type of old English language. Um, I don't think they've established where we are on Earth. So I'll let it slide, but I do wish we had old English just because you've got like knights and stuff and castles. If you have a fantasy <clears> setting <throat> and you 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 have like dragons and knights and whatever, there's an expectation from the audience Agreed. that there's going to be a dialogue that matches the setting. Somebody better be saying freaking ye, ye shall not <laughs> enter or something. Um, but yes, the, the deaths they they keep having a surprise, shocking death with each issue. And at first, it seemed like, okay, cool, you're you're setting up the stakes, no one's safe, which I'm fine with. But now, three issues in, you're right, it just kind of feels like it's happening to happen. And even in this instance, it looks like it's happening for shocking, uh, not political reasons, but uh, I guess you could say diversity reasons. Because we're killing off characters that are in main continuity, the established characters, to let their you know, either female or whatever step forward. And not that I'm opposed to that. It just feels like that is the point of doing this rather than letting the story tell itself. He did similar things in deceased. Yeah. But you it know, also, by the, by the time you're done with the first volume of deceased, you know, there's a new Batman, there's a new Superman, there's a new green lantern, but it all kind of felt like it flowed here, there. Yeah. It does, that's not what I'm feeling here. I'm not sure what, what is going on. Maybe I'm just, being more critical because some of my expectations of a story of this nature and this genre aren't being met. So maybe I'm being uh, maybe hyper focused on the details and, and seeing what else doesn't feel right. No, I, I mean, like I, I completely understand because I feel like we spent this entire issue for the third issue, setting up the dynamics of the different kingdoms and the relationships and politics they have between each other. And so much of this issue focuses on black lightning's character and the relationship he has with the Amazons, as opposed to the relationship with the the elves, and then the kind of cross bridge there between Diana's relationship with the elves, which kind of opposes Black Lightning's thought process on them or thought viewpoint of them. Um, so it seemed like it was really trying to establish this mindset, and you've had Black Lightning kind of leading the plot of this book for the past three issues. Like he's the one setting things into motions, not necessarily in a good way. And then he's one of the ones that gets killed here. And yes, we I get that the idea is you're going to have a vengeful daughter stepping forward now. We already have that. That already happened mm -hmm. in this issue. So it feels like you're just retreading. Um, and to me, that was less exciting because we, we have this with, with Supergirl. And I as much as I don't like seeing Supergirl be almost evil, practically evil here, I understand her rage. She went and murdered a child. <laughs> She's evil. Oh, she's definitely evil. Like, yeah. I I understand being vengeful, but she definitely crossed that line. And like in like front of his gonna... father. To oh yeah, him. and you're gonna see it again. There's not a lot of good characters here at all. I mean, good good in terms of entertaining, but not good as in morally good. Like everyone Just is pretty... Batman. Yeah, we'll see. So far, Batman. Even Clark. Clark's like, I'm not gonna kill you. Um, uh, Clark's got a uh, he's got an edge to him that you don't normally see. It's a little bit. Less nice. Let's put it that way. Yeah, he he's got kind of like that rich boy. I've got daddy's money. I can yes. do what I want type of mentality. But he hasn't crossed the line yet. Yet is mm -hmm. the key word. But um, yeah, it's I'm I'm entertained. I'm enjoying the book. This was the the end of this this issue is what I found questionable. I'm like, mm, I don't know if that was the best choice to make. But I'll I mean I'll definitely be back for issue four. Yeah, I just think they could have tightened up the dialogue and stuff like that. But the art is fantastic, you know. Art's fantastic. It's a fun story. It's a fun escape. It's recognizable but different. I loved seeing everyone they had in the prison cells. Personally, well, yeah, that's going to play out in the future because you can't oh. have magic in the in this land. Absolutely. <laughs> and of course, Constantine was the I don't know it was the the hand to Black Lightning. I think he must have been. Yeah, I mean, pretty much he he was like the the uh, Merlin, the 
pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So I, I will definitely recommend this one. Certainly higher than Detective Comics. Um, I'm getting a lot of enjoyment out of it. But stop being so predictable. How about we not murder a major character off that we just met? We can we can go an issue or two without a murder. The final issue we're going to talk about is Arkham City, The Order of the World, number four. Dan Waters and Danny. We've been talking about this one since the very first issue. I don't have a lot more, any more superlatives to use about this. It's really good. It's solid. If yep. you want to uh, look at, at Gotham and the criminals there without Batman in there, you know, it's, there is Azrael kind of uh, as a vengeful kind of a uh, character that's trying to trying to track these things down and figure out what is going on. It's, it's a solid book. It's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, this issue kind of, and, and I wouldn't say this book has been fast paced by any means, but this issue does slow the pacing down a little bit because it plays with the theme of being crazy. And um, <clears throat> you've got, um, um, oh gosh, why can't I think of the villain's name? I, I want to say Dr. Phosphorus and it's Dr. Dr. Phosphorus. Well, you got Ten-Eyed Man and he's been like the draw for me, but he kind of gets taken out of commission here to a degree. Um, but the uh, the green, I'm letting myself down right now. Uh, it's him and Nocturna. And they're both having this whole thing throughout this issue where they're trying so hard to be normal and talking about what normal people do. It's it's funny because <laughs> they're definitely not normal. Like Nocturne is eating a neighbor's cat and everything else. But the whole point of it isn't necessarily to have the humor there. You get the doctor who finds them at the end based on what Ten-Eyed Man has been doing and the map that he's created of this the city. What was essentially the quarantine zone for Arkham, how he maps it onto Gotham that's how she finds them. She finds them in the quarantine of Gotham or what's supposed it's Dr. to be Dr. Phosphorus. Oh, it is Dr. Phosphorus. Um, I know it was. I was like, what is he talking about? But yeah, so the, he like gives his neighbors radiation poisoning, but it's not on purpose. It's not there, but you don't really realize what the point of this humor of them trying to be normal is until the doctor shows up at the end and is talking with them. And she's talking about the things that she's seen and that she's experienced in the past, like 48 hours. And they're over here going, doctor, that is not normal. And and there, you get this whole mind trick that's going on of what is real? What is reality? Are there really occult-like things out there? And I enjoyed that aspect, but this was probably my least favorite issue. But if you if you were in for it, it's only got a couple more issues left. And I, I think you'll yeah. enjoy this one. So it was a good week in Batman. There's not a whole Absolutely. lot to, to not recommend here. You, I'd say read all three or all four of them. Definitely read Batman first, though, because that's, that's mm. the best issue if you're looking for something a little bit different, take you out of continuity. Dark Knights of Steel is fine. I find it hard to buy into the premise of Detective Comics, but it looks great. Yeah. I'll give it that. I, I, I will say, I think this is the first week we haven't had an issue that was like absolute garbage. Uh, it was a limited week. <laughs> <Only four issues. laughs> Fair. 